Yes, YouTube, and welcome back to Contemporary Collectibles. It's that time again. It's One Piece TCG Market Watch. If you guys still have your corneas intact, then let's jump straight into the video. Enjoy it, guys, and I'll catch you on the other side. Peace. Okay guys, here we go. First we're gonna check out booster box prices. And now remember, we haven't done Market Watch for about three weeks. So we're expecting a bit of change from the last Market Watch. Now, let's start off with the first set from the One Piece TCG, Romance Dawn. Now we're on the three month here. Let's move us over to the one year, okay. So we did bottom out at about $150 around July, August time and the previous all-time high was in january and that was just under 600 dollars 580 and now we're currently sitting at a market price of 503 bang on the 500 mark now let's move over to the three month and i'm expecting we're going to see a bit of a trend here for some of the earlier sets now we know reprints are on the way that has been announced but we do not know the specifics and we also don't know whether or not there are a lot of uh, places that have announced they're getting stock in June or July. We don't know if that's a reprint or we don't know if that's old stock. I am tempted to believe that it's older stock. However, I am, I am not, I'm not going to say anything with 100% conviction until we know more. Now, another piece of context we need to know is all those places that are getting stock are not getting a lot. One case, two cases max. There is not a lot of this to go around. Okay, now let's check out the price. So since the peak at uh, just under $600, we have slowly declined as you would expect when reprints were announced. But, and since there was a bit more um, information around what kind of stock, what quantities were coming, we have seen a little bit of leveling off. Now, in my opinion, this is probably because of the shortage of the amount that places are getting. It isn't much. And this has kind of inst instilled a little bit more confidence in buyers and sellers and people who are holding on to the product to kind of take a step back, wait, see what the situation is. So for Romance Dawn, we can see we have peaked up a little bit over the past month or so. Let's see what Paramount War is saying. Okay, so let's move over to the year. We had a low, same time, August, um, August at the end of August, July. We had just under $100 and the all-time high for Paramount War, which is the second set for the One Piece TCG, was just under $400. Can't get my words out. Um, and well around about 390 and that was again in January. Let's move over to the three month. I feel like this um, chart specifically gives us a good indication of what to see because a lot has happened over the past three months. Everything else is kind of irrelevant at the minute. So let's have a look. Since the previous all time high at 390, we did dip to just around $300, which is quite a significant drop. Um, and now you can see we've had a resurgence. We've had again that confirmation that there isn't much of this restock going around. So it's given a bit more confidence into the market. I'm expecting to see this for Pillars of Strength as well. Maybe not so much, but for the sets that have been announced by Bandai specifically that are being reprinted, which was OPO5, OPO6 and OPO7, I'm assuming they're going to be a bit more drastic to the downside. So, market price at the moment is currently sitting at $365 for Paramount War. This may see a bit of turbulence. Again, we're chopping and changing. If you did watch the last market watch, you'll know that we spoke about a crab market. And for anyone who doesn't understand what that means, it's a term given to a market that is moving sideways. It's chopping up and down, a bit like how a crab moves sideways. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. We're seeing indecisiveness. We're seeing lack of certainty and lack of conviction in the market. Buyers and sellers are kind of at odds, not really knowing what to do, especially those who are trying to flip products and make a bit of profit. Um, 
if you are holding product or stock of Paramount War, Roman Storm, whatever else, I would just say hold on and wait. Unless you've not been buying at these crazy prices, you've got nothing really to worry about. Even if you have, um, and this is some of the ethos for the channel, we are holding products for years and years into the future. What happens short term, this kind of turbulence is irrelevant. So have a bit of um, confidence in knowing that. And as long as you can calm your emotions and stay level headed and not act on FOMO, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. This kind of short term movement, Again, it's for people who are trying to flip product fast, quickly. Um, and so that's why we're going to try and check out what the markets are actually saying. So now let's move over to pillars of strength. Again, same kind of thing. So let's check out the year. Okay, so we had a all-time low around about September, August time, a bit later on than the other two sets. And that was around $80. Wow, wow. And the previous all-time high was again just beginning of January this year, but we have surpassed it. The previous all-time high was $250. We're basically at the all-time high right now at $270, just over. Now this is very, very interesting. Um, so as you can see, this was the previous all-time high, 250. We did dip down just like the Paramount War chart. It's exactly the same. Romance Dawn, also exactly the same. Very, very interesting that these three sets are kind of in unison at the moment. Now, one thing Pillars of Strength is different is that it has seen more of a significant, exaggerated upside movement which I think is fascinating. Um, one of the reasons I think this is, is again, there is not much product coming to the July, June restock. We know that for a fact. I don't know if there's some extra information out there that power, um, Pillars of Strength specifically is not gonna be touched by these reprints. Who knows at this point? There's a lot of speculation. Be careful what you listen to and you know, make sure if it doesn't come from Bandai, specifically or your LGS then take it with a pinch of salt now anyway we're currently sitting at the all-time high wow that is fascinating so since around the 20th of March we've kind of leveled off once we reach that peak again we're seeing that the support we're getting there's a lot of buy orders a lot of selling orders around about this 230 to 250 mark what we're probably going to see is the price will come down again and it will bounce off the last all-time high, which was $250. And then we'll probably see a bit more sideways action. And if there's any more information that comes out that could hinder the price or make it go up, make it go down. If none of that happens, we're probably gonna see this price climb a little bit higher, especially if there is no more news about pillars of strength coming to LGSs or anything like that. Okay. So $270 is the Pills of Strength market price. Let's check out Kingdoms of Intrigue. Now, this is also quite an interesting chart because Bandai have not really spoke about Kingdoms of Intrigue. There isn't much information. I am unaware if LGSs are receiving Kingdoms of Intrigue. All I know is that they're receiving a, a small amount of Romance Dawn, Paramount War and potentially pillars of strength i'm not sure about pillars of strength so kingdoms of intrigue is kind of in this gray zone now we had an all-time high for kingdoms of intrigue at 80 dollars now this set was really high when it came out but it kind of dropped quite significantly um, so we had the all-time low and that was in october we had the all-time high again we're seeing this pattern we've seen it previous times in january mid-january at 180 dollars quite a steep line significant climb there was a lot of hype during this time especially with the release of awakening of new era the fifth set since then let's move over to the three months so since the all-time high in january for 180 dollars we came back down 250 and there we bounced up from support and we have not yet overtaken the previous all-time high but we bounced at 170, which is $10 just below the all-time high. I mean, we're knocking on the door, and as you can see, we've got a little flip up 
at the end, which could suggest further uptick. Now, market price is currently sitting at again $170. We're kind of seeing the same thing, guys. Look at these charts. We have a we have a peak and then we have a trough all around about. Let's see, is it February here? February here. February for Paramount War, again, February, no, okay, so Roman Stone is the only one that books that trend, but for Paramount War, Pills of Strength and Kings of Intrigue, we have a rebound in mid-February, very, very interesting, that's a pattern forming. Now, let's check out the one month, what's happening most specifically, look at that, we're all over the place, again, this kind of reflects the lack of information, lack of clarity, People don't really know what to do, again, as I've already mentioned. Okay, very interesting. Pillars of Strength and um, Kingdoms of Intrigue, I think I want to watch, specifically because there is not that much information on them in regards to reprints right now. Now, let's move on to Awakening of a New Era. Let's check out the one year. Okay, so again, we had the previous low, the all-time low, which when the box first came out, we dipped not very much. We dipped down. Again, this, this price when the box first released was extremely inflated. We came out way above MSRP. Pre-orders had already been soaked up. There was not enough stock to go around, which surged the price up. Now, since then, as most products do when they first come out, the, the price is dropped to around about $100. And then we see a very significant climb all the way up to the beginning of January, where the, we have the all-time high for Awakening of New Era, which was $300. Since then, let's move over to the three month, we see the same kind of thing. We have the all-time high, and then we have a trough in February, quite early February for this one. We bottomed out from $300 to $250. And then since then, we've been slowly climbing. We had a bit of a run up for the all time high, but we topped out around about $290. And now we've seen another drop off. What I will say, market watch, by the way, is $247. So we're down, we're down around about $50 from the all time high. But just because this line is tailing off, let's look at the one month. Just because this line is tailing off does not mean we're cascading down. What you'll find will happen is, I'm assuming we're going to bounce from this $245 mark and then we'll probably carry on back up, um, which indicates kind of healthy price action. You see this very often in uh, stocks that they the price will reach the previous peak where there was a lot of buy orders and then it will bounce back up because there are people willing to buy in at that price again. So just because we have a tail down here does not mean we're going to cascade down. OPO5 is very interesting. It kind of has this plot armor um, that everyone it's everyone's favorite set. It was so hyped, it had the most hype out of any One Piece set released. OPO 6 kind of waned in comparison to this one. It was kind of in the shadow of it. Since then, all the cards from this set are extremely hot. People want these cards. Since there was a reprint announced of OPO 5, it has kind of hindered it a bit. Not really. I mean, look at this price chart. We're still seeing tops were still knocking on the door of all-time highs i think opio 5 is going to be continue to be one of the most prized expensive sets in the one piece tcg unless bandai can really force that price down by a significant reprint which is something we haven't heard about not yet anyway until we until we see that we're just going to assume OPO5 is going to continue from strength to strength and is going to continue to try and challenge the all-time high. With that being said, let's check out OPO6, which is the latest installment from the One Piece TCG. We see, I mean, this set is very new again, and you know how I feel about new sets. I don't really like talking about them too much in depth because they haven't had time to appreciate and marinate in the market, um, you could say. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Beginning of December, we had the all-time low at around about $115, which is still, it's around about MSRP. And the all-time high, $250 in uh, start of February, end of January. Let's move over to the three month. Um, 
And again, since the all time high, we have peaked down. This is kind of similar to the Romance Dawn chart in that we have troughed here. We bounced from 190 and now we're sitting at around about $215 for the market price. OPO6 is pretty hot right now just because there are a lot of strong cards coming out of here. I believe Gecko Moria has just won a regional championship which is pretty big for OPO6 and as we'll look at shortly when we look at single, singles there's a lot of Gecko Moria black decks and green decks that are really in at the minute, really meta strong and also quite new and people want to try new things when it comes to TCGs. So. Again, not really much to talk about for OPO6, All, only that it's extremely inflated from MSRP. You know, this set is clearly in demand. For how long this is going to be, I'm not sure. Remember, OPO6, OPO5 and OPO7 specifically, Bandai has mentioned that they will be targeting them for reprint, so we don't know how long this price action is going to continue. But at the minute, we're sitting at you know, it's gone up quite a lot. MSRP is around about $100, $120. A lot of people will have paid. And we're currently $100 above that. So, um, if, if you're sitting on a lot of OPO sticks, it might be a good time to take a bit of profits. But again, I can't say this is not financial advice. Now, let's check out the singles. Romance Dawn, the king, the OG, Manga Rare himself. Manga Shanks, let's check out, how have you been doing mate? So again, all time low was around about just under $700 and we're actually currently sitting at a new all time high. Very interesting, very interesting. Again, we're kind of seeing something similar on the three month in a lesser sense in that we dipped from the all time high only around about from, what's that? Just about $80 we dipped down from 100, 1,600 to 1,540. And we're at a new all-time high at the minute of 1,645, just under 1,650 for market price. Guys, you know how I feel about this card. I think it's extremely collectible, extremely expensive for a reason. This will forever be the very first manga rare and that comes with it a little bit of responsibility in that it's something collectors want to have in the collection. The very first manga rare from the very first set. Who, who wouldn't want that in the collection? Now let's check out Trafalgar. Wow, where have you been my friend? Where have I been more like it? This is crazy. Wow, so I mean... This thing is invincible, guys. It literally has the infinity gauntlet wrapped around it. Look at this. All time high, $430 just underneath February. We've seen a bit of a trend here with February. And since then, we, we are on a bit of a downturn, but that is to be expected. Price has just been climbing up significantly. And I say a downturn, what? We dip from 420 down to 405, that's nothing. That's like $15. Again, we're still tapping at the all time high. There is a lot of momentum for these cards at the minute. And if you know anything about my opinion about these first cards, now we're looking at the Manga Zorro. Manga Zorro, the, uh, the leader Zorro card. You'll know that these are some of my favorite cards. They're absolutely beautiful watercolored um, caricatures. Now, Zorro had an all-time low in October, like a lot of the cards did, a lot of the boxes did. That's not really booking the trend there. And f again, February had an all-time high at $340, and now market price is $313. This card is beautiful. I absolutely love this card. Zorro is one of my favorite characters as well. I think his transformation and his, his, um, his arc is one of the best that Oda has um, created in the One Piece TCG. TCG, you know what I mean, the, the One Piece universe. Um, and since then, this card is still in demand. You know, this downturn, this little downturn, what, if, was, what we're seeing here, from 340, nothing again, it's like 
thirty dollars. That's probably just people taking profits, if, if I'm honest. And again, we're going to continue chopping sideways until we have more confirmation. Because remember, what normally happens is the boxes get hit first, and then this it trickles down to the singles. Now, let's check out one of the most iconic uh, cards in the entire TCG, the Parallel Nami. Let's go to the one year. And I'm just gonna quickly go over this because we talk about every single time. This card is a bit of a meme on Contemporary Collectibles because of here. The card was banned in um, from Standard Play in Europe, not Asia. Um, and oh, like I said, don't believe it was Asia. I'm pretty sure it was just um, the English speaking area. And basically everyone was scared into selling this card because a lot of places on YouTube, there was a lot of fear of this card's gonna go to zero. It's no longer relevant anymore. But look at this card. Look at how iconic it is. It's Nami. It's, she's in a crazy, you know, fighting pose, jiggling all over the place. And we troughed. We dipped down, I think it was, what? We dipped down about $30. And then over the next two days, we went on an absolute tear. And basically, this is just a lesson to don't react on your emotions. Take a step back. Think about it. Is this one of your favorite cards? Do you think this card is going to do well long term? Instead of over the next few months or the next few weeks, throw your mind into the future. Think about the next five years, the next 10 years. Will this card stand the test of time? And in my opinion, it will. And I was trying to get that message across. And again, all of these people who had conviction, they started to buy it up because they believed it was a great time to get into it when other people were fearful. And it turns out they did the right thing because we peaked at $390 in uh, beginning of February. And now we're currently sitting at 290. So again, we're just gonna see a bit of crab, crab movement for this card will probably bounce from this level here. So we'll probably go down to around about 250 and then we'll probably just go right back up again. So that is the All Art Nami card. Let's check out some other cards. Let's, what should we have a look at? Let's check out this Luffy card, which is absolutely gorgeous. Let's go to the year. So market price is currently sitting at 265. The all time high was again, the beginning of February at $300. So we're sitting around about just $40, $50 underneath. And again, what are we seeing from these charts, guys? What are we seeing from these charts? We're seeing strength. We're not seeing capitulation. Again, we're not seeing drastic downside to the bottom. We're seeing conviction. We're seeing people knocking on the door. We're seeing people buying at these prices. People are not deterred. Here we are looking at the Doflamingo and market price is currently sitting at $240, which again is what? $30 from the all time high, which is 270. This is very, very interesting. It just kind of shows you how much these cards are in demand. People want a piece of the pie, big time. Let's check out the Yamato. This card absolutely blew me away. I could not believe how cheap it was for so long. When I started collecting this card, it was it was like one of the cards that you, if you pulled this card from Roman Stone, you were a bit disappointed. Cause it was like $50, $40. And now look at it. We peaked out at 169, nice. $170 in, again, the beginning of February. And we have seen a bit more of a significant drop off recently. I'm, I would probably put that down to the fact that OPO6 was tipped to be very meta strong. A lot of people were buying up green cards. And then when it came out, people cashed in, people sold into profit. So again, because we did dip down past this support is why I'm saying this. Normally, what would have happened is we would have bounced from here. Let's go on the three month or six months. See if we can see this now. So again we did we did start to slow down at this point but we are below it now so we probably might dip down a little bit lower market price at the moment is a hundred dollars which isn't too much off the all-time high but compared to some of the other cards it is a little bit lower let's check out the dracula mihawk paramount 
Paramount Parallel. I don't want to spend too much time on Romance Dawn. I could honestly get caught sometimes talking and talking about prices of cards that I love. Um, <laughs> so I, I think the all time low is a bit off the screen. I need to find out if any of you guys know, is there a way to increase the scale, the time scale for these charts? Or I might have to talk to TCG if there's a way they can let me do that. So the all time low was $36, which was in April. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and the all time high was 140. Again, look, see here, we are actually sitting on top of this resistance here. So this resistance or this basically support is what it's called when you're uh, analyzing price action was around about $85 and now we're currently sitting at $85 see we're riding on top of this we might go up we might go down it depends on what Bandai are gonna come out with okay just before we move off these Romance Dawn cards I wanted to look at this the most expensive super rare which is the 8 drop Captain Kid for the longest time it was a couple of dollars um, and the all time high was the end of February for $40, again, OPO6 hype, and now basically we're sitting at what, $33 is the market price, we're still at all time highs in my opinion for, the, for this card, crazy, uh, if there's one thing we can take away from this is that Romance Dawn is still extremely hot. So, Paramount War, let's check out the Portagas D Ace, I don't want this video to be super long, I don't want to give myself a load of editing today, which always happens <laughs> um okay so i absolutely love this card podcast da's look how smoking it is i absolutely love it i love it 560 dollars was the all-time low in october all-time high was 1160 dollars at the beginning of january and the market price at the moment we're there we're basically sitting there 1140 crazy guys this is absolutely insane let's go over to the to the uh, three month again not many buys putting in for this card just because it is so expensive i think if people are buying this card they're probably buying it slabbed or they're buying it on ebay where they can get a little bit more um pictures a little bit more information about the card that they're buying i always think buying really expensive cards from tcg players a little bit of a risk anyway that's just my opinion. Let's check out the Edward New Yay. Okay, so not really meta relevant at the moment. We had the all time high when this card was restricted. Bit like the Nami card in October, which was $80. And the all time high, end of January, $180. So we had an $100 increase and now we're currently sitting at 127 We don't have a lot of support just because now this is a little bit of a lesson in price analysis because this line was so steep because there was little support basically what you want to see is this you want to see it going up and every dip and every trough is a buy and a sell a buy and a sell if the price goes up vertical that's just pure buys and there is little um, support little what's the good word I can use there's like not much of a parachute to catch it when the price is tanking so and because of that the price could easily just go right back down to where the pump initially started from in stocks that is cards and TCGs are just a little bit different I'm just giving you a bit more of a nuanced perspective on some of these prices I'm not treating them as stocks or anything like that this is just a different way to analyze the price so $127 is the market price and that probably is going to go down a little bit more I think in my opinion let's check out the Borsellino All Art which was in massive demand at the beginning of the new year because mainly Sakazuki was on fire since it has been banned and changed it's not change, it's a completely different leader altogether. We've seen a little bit of a tail off. We had a bit, quite a significant drop. I think this was when OPO5 was announced it was going to be reprinted. And from the all time high, 130, we're currently sitting at 198, basically $100. $30 off the all time high, not too bad in my opinion. Probably just going to go sideways from then on. 
Let's check out the Kuzan actually. Okay, so market price at the moment, this is such a beautiful card, is $76, which is down from 87, what, it's $10, not really much going on there. So again, look at this guys, we, uh, we reached an all time high, tried to reach another it again this is called a double peak and since then we've lost a little bit of, of momentum and we've decided to go back down a double peak basically means it has an all-time high the price goes again to try and overtake the all-time high and if it fails or if it reaches the same height that means there's not enough momentum and it kind of goes back down to where it in it, its next support is as i was talking about with the edward new gate that was those kind of dips and troughs. Okay, moving on. What shall we look at next? What shall we have a look at? Wow, Barcelona Super Rare is on the top page again. Look at this card. This is fantastic in my opinion. Because this Super Rare, I don't think I don't think it's overly expensive. Now, before people berate me for that, I'm putting this in perspective to other TCGs. If you're looking at Magic, if you're looking at Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon, some of those cards are so expensive and I realize you need to build a deck of four for these but you you know these being so expensive will mean maybe maneuver, try and find something else, try and find a card that succeeds people who play Barcelino. I feel like people who are very unhappy with Barcelino being expensive they kind of just want to run a meta, a meta deck. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. People can play the game however they want. All I'm saying is, if everyone's buying this card, find a card that can undercut it. Find a card that can get rid of people who rely heavily on Barcelinos. That's how the TCG, that's how Bandai want you to play it. You know, they want you to figure out ways to combat people who just run meta decks. Now, having said that, Barcelino is probably a bad example just because it is so strong. People running black pretty much need to run this card, I understand that. And we had an all-time high at $50 and basically we're there again. Again, we're kind of seeing sideways movement, which is crabbing. We don't really know what's going to happen with Paramount War Singles just yet. And that kind of shows in the cards. Let's have a look. What else should we look at? There's not really much going on. In Paramount War, I don't think. Everything is pretty expensive. Not too expensive compared to Romance Dawn or Awakening of a New Era, but it is still pretty up there. Let's check out Smoker just before we move on to Pills of Strength. Let's go to the year and we have an all-time low at $60, all-time high at $120 at the beginning of February. Again, notice a bit of a trend here. And market price at the minute is $80. Again, prices dipped down below this support. Again, this would be one of those parachute pockets that I was talking about. We've dipped down below there and where are we leveled off? So we've leveled off around about here, which must be some support from, when was this? May, okay, last year. People clearly thought that was a good time to buy because the price has stabilized. Not much going on for Smoker. I don't think many people are running Smoker as a leader at the minute just because Gekko Moria is like the in black leader to use. Um, and again, like Smoker, it is mono color. Okay, let's move on to Pillars of Strength and let's check out the Soggy King Manga Rare to start for the year. We have an all time low in October of $230 and we have an all time high at the beginning of January for $660. Not my favorite Manga Rare. You guys know that. I like his top as a character. I think he's become way more likable. Um, just not my favorite character, what can I say? Maybe he's your favorite character, and that's fine. However, there is still a bit of demand for this card because let's go over to the three month. I mean, look at that. We're basically still at all time highs. Market price at the minute is $640. What is that? $20 below, still demand. If people didn't like this card, people would just sell it into peep, into profit and the price would tank. So clearly it is a favorite. I feel like there is a bit of a cult following for a SOP. If you're in a SOP lover, let me know in the comments below. Am I missing a trick here? Now, 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 let's check out this guy, Charlotte Katakuri. 
one of the most interesting characters in the One Piece TCG and in the uh, anime manga mainly because of his his ability but also because of his massive fight with Luffy so we have an all-time low in September at 111 and we peaked at the beginning of January at $260 and we're currently sitting at a market price of $220 so we're down around about what what's that um, 260 220 that's like what $40 nothing really that's hardly anything this 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 deck is still in demand this is a really strong leader the pudding um, which is the big mom's pirate leader in OPO is it OPO 7 or OPO 8 I can't remember make sure you let me know in the comments what the pudding Charlotte pudding leader um, leader is from there is still a lot of hype and that, but pudding is also purple yellow so it's the first time we have big moms which isn't mono yellow so that'll be really interesting anyway charlotte katakuri one of the most popular leaders still very strong in the meta and that's mainly because it's got some outrageous abilities outrageous cards some of the big mom cards are very very strong very hard to play against but still really fun when you manage to get a victory I can't see this card going down anytime soon if there are any ban, amount, uh, ban announcements in the future maybe we'll see something a bit different until then this leader is still going to be extremely relevant and for $250 I can't see it going much lower than that if I'm honest let's check out these now these wanted cards I love them I absolutely love them I'm hoping to get them all slabbed one day in the future. We then this Luffy one is so nice. It's probably it is the most desirable one because market price is $134, which is down $30 from the all-time high, which was in February. So again, we're basically there, guys. We're hovering at the very top. What can I say? These cards are still in massive demand. And Pills of Strength, as I mentioned before, is in that grey zone. There hasn't been that much revealed about what's happening with Pillars of Strength. So until we find that, these prices are still going to be extremely high. Okay, now we're looking at the Captain Kid Wanted card. And market price is $75, which is down from $90, which was again in mid-February. Again, we're, going, we're noticing mid-February was like the all-time high for most of these cards. That's when all these prices were extremely inflated and especially green cards so let's check out this alternate art katakuri which is i think this was like one of my first pulls i think pills of strength was the very first um one piece box that i opened let's check out for the year again very slowly increasing the all-time high is in at the beginning of well it's like mid-january this time for 140 dollars we're currently seeing at 100 dollars which is quite expensive for an all art but it's Charlotte Katakuri at the, at the end of the day people run I think two between two and four of those cards this is the secret rare version there isn't a super rare of this card it's just a secret rare and that is Bandai trying to manipulate price in the terms that this is a very strong card therefore let's just make it a secret rare and make it a bit harder to pull as everyone knows you only get a certain amount of secret rares per box I believe it's two three if you're lucky and compared to super rares you get way more i think it's like six seven maybe i can't remember off the top of my head wow one card that has seen a resurgence is this card the khalifa altar now i'm not sure if it's just a bit of a waifu tax very very curvaceous lady to say the least um, we're at the all-time low in September and we're at all-time highs. This bit doesn't count, that's when the card first came out. Everyone sells as, for as much as they possibly can when the first card first came out. But we're at an all-time high at $50. Is this because a lot of people are using it in Sakazuki in Gekko Moria decks? You tell me in the comments. But I'm kind of not surprised. But this card was cheap for a long time. Let's just let's just go back on it and it for a year ago. Look, so we did have um, an upsurge 
in the beginning of January. Again, for most cards it did. But this card did crash down. Well, I say crash, it didn't really crash. It went down by like $10. But since then, we're at an all-time high. So that is pretty interesting, to say the least. Let's check out the Kaido Wanted card quickly before I move on to Kingdoms of Intrigue. Okay, so not as much love for the Kaido Wanted card. The all-time high was in November for this one at $80. And we're currently sitting at 44, so around about 50% reduction. I love, I love this set. I think it's fantastic. I think there's a lot of flavor. It's the, it was the dawn of the yellow Big Mom Pirates. So, you know, that's a really iconic set, in my opinion. Okay, so Kingdoms of Intrigue, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Let's check out the manga Sabo Altar, which is pretty nice. Not one of my favorites, but again, it's pretty nice. And we're basically sitting at all-time highs. What are we? $650, the all-time high officially on TCG Player was $675 at the beginning of March. So guys, we're still there. There's still buy orders going in from, this one was what, this seventh? People are still buying this card. It's still in demand. The Bo Hancock has become the chase card for the set. It wasn't when it first came out, I believe. It was the Rebecca um, leader card was top. I think that was just mainly people wanting to try it out and run it as um, in their decks. So we have an all-time high at the end of January of $170, and now we're currently sitting at $140. Not much to report there, other than we're not too far off all-time highs. Um, there's quite a significant drop-off from the Bo Hancock to the Trafalgar Law, and all the other cards are sitting under that. Let's check out one of them specifically. What should we have a look at? Let's check out the Vivi Altar. And again, it just doesn't seem like there's much love for these kind of cards. Kingdoms of Intrigue. I think there's a lot of upside potential long term. At the minute, these cards are pretty cheap. But again, what's to say 10 years in the future, these cards, once everything's stopped working, reprints have stopped coming and everything else, these cards have kind of been forgotten about and some of them are pretty iconic. Some of these characters are very strong in terms of IP. Let's check out the Trafalgar Law. $65 is the market price. Ooh, wow, significant tank. That's probably people profiting from the increase um, in the wake of OPO 6. Speaking of which, let's move over to OPO 5. <laughs> And let's check out the Manga Rare Luffy for the year. Wow, well, gee, wow. We're currently sitting at all time highs, $3,385. Oof, wow. People buying this card at these prices must not care that much about reprints coming out for Opio 5, which Bandai have confirmed are coming. I would hold off guys, I would wait to buy this card until we know a bit more. Bandai might significantly flood the market with this product, and which means these cards will be way more easier to get and pull. And when that happens, these, these prices are going to tank. These prices are going to go down. $2,000 for the Oda Ichiro stamped Luffy card. I love this card, I really want it. Haven't pulled it. Um, and again, we're basically at all time highs for that card as well. The Ustas Captain Kid is at an all time high as well. $876. Is the Law at an all time high as well? It bloody well is. Wow. 1000 just over $1,000 for these. Wow. Wow. So all-time highs for every single manga rare on OPO5. Wow, these people are either crazy or they know something that we don't know. Um, let's check out the Enel leader card. I was expecting this. Not being shown as much love. We did get a bit of a bounce in the beginning of January when the hype was crazy. And now we're, which was, what's that, $111. And now we're currently sitting at $85. I do think, Enel has kind of peaked off a little bit, still a really strong leader, but 
I think Katakuri has had a little bit more love in terms of meta from the meta deck list that I had a look at before doing the market watch. And again, we're seeing quite a lot of drops. So the Sakazuki, obviously this card has been banned. And look at that, guys. We're not really surprised, are we? We were sitting around about 100 and, what was it, $113, and now we're at 50 If Sakazuki is one of your favorite characters, it might be a good time to buy in. Bandai do have a tradition of banning cards, changing the meta environment around in them, surrounding them, and then bringing them back. Don't call me on that. I'm not sure if they're going to, though. There is a new Sakazuki leader as well. And yeah, I'm just extremely surprised that those car those manga rares are at all time highs. Let's check out the Yamato SP. And wow, significant drops. All time highs in January of 160. And we're currently sitting at 100, so $60 below all time highs. And before we get off, we can't leave without checking out the SP Nami card. Beautiful card. Again, Nami is one of the characters that is very stable in terms of long-term IP strength, in my opinion. Uh, we had the all-time high, which was $280 at the mid-January, and now we're sitting at $190. So that's about a $100 drop. I don't know if that's people, again, cashing in on profits, but that seems quite steep. Okay, okay. Now, OPO6, Wings of the Captain. The Again, these cards are brand new, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on them. We're just going to check them out. This manga card is so nice. I absolutely love it, and it looks like all of you guys do too, because market price is a $1,500, which is not a joke. That is not a joke at all, especially for a brand new one. We might see it tank down. I mean, we've already seen it drop on there that you just saw. How far it's going to drop, I'm not sure. I don't think it's going to drop too much, if I'm honest, just because Zorro, green Zorro, again, you know, it, it looks amazing. Let's check out the Yamato All Art. So let's go to the one month. We peaked out 14th of March at $200, and now we're sitting at 175 Not too bad, not too um, below all-time highs. This is a yellow and green captain. And as you guys know, this is a really green heavy set. Okay, let's check out the Rebecca card. Now, I wonder why people are loving this card. I know it's really good for any black decks, but holy crap, guys, it's so distracting. <laughs> um, okay, so not a lot of love when it first came out, but wow. Um, <laughs> $160 is the all-time high. This, current, this card is currently at all-time highs. And you, unfortunately, the sample is currently cutting out the shine, the glint coming from those uh, bosoms. The Charlotte Linlin SP, all-time highs, 156. Really nice card, a really annoying card to play against for anyone who goes against anyone who plays the uh, 10 drop big mom from Pillars of Strength. This is just a nice rehash of it. Let's check out the Reiju and okay we're on a little bit of a downturn. We had the all time high, 140, 127, what we're down $10. Hardly anything, we're probably going to see a little bit more downturn. This Perona Altar is fantastic. I really want this one. She She's probably one of my favorite characters from the Thriller Bark arc, which can't be said for very many of them. Um, if people who don't know, it's not one of the most popular arcs in the One Piece TCG. One Piece, I keep saying One Piece TCG. I mean the One Piece, you know, manga universe. $120 for the Perona Altar. What about the leader? Okay, not as much, not as strong in terms of able to hold the price action compared to the Yamato or the um, Reiju, but we've dipped from 150 down to 116, which is the market price. Now, the Gekko Moria, I believe, is doing extremely well. It, it did just win a regional and we dipped from 200, which I think is a bit crazy. No one ever really expected it to stay at that price. But I think we're starting to build a little bit of stabilization now. A market price at 116, 
started to level off and crab sideways. The this treasure rare, which I'm gonna not gonna lie to you, I do not like it. I know it's in like the comic book style, not for me. I do not like this card. I think all this hair as well is just messy and just looks scruffy. Yeah, not for me. Uh, market price eighty-seven dollars. A lot of people who read manga and re and are into anime, we like it because we prefer it to like comic book styles. So I don't understand why they would do a comic book. Um, version. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this set is just full of enormous. Um, yeah, so this is this is another one of those cards. Um, market price is eighty-five dollars for the Reju. I feel like people playing these cards, they just want to distract you when they put them down. Um, but yeah, for, a bit down from the all-time high of a hundred dollars, so right on eighty-five. Probably going to go down a little bit more, and the super rare is pretty much the same. Um, not on the first page though, and the I love this buggy. I mean, a lot of these cards are really expensive still, guys. Look, we're looking at 105, 80, 76, 62, 41, 42 for the Uta leader, which isn't getting a lot of love. It's a red purple. Um, duo color and yeah okay guys now what do I think about the current market there is definitely a lull I think in terms of people making content there is definitely a bit of shortage of things to talk about unless you're talking about decks and what's in and what's not um, just be careful when you hear things about things getting banned. We don't know anything that's going on yet. We don't know what's going to be banned. We don't even know if there is going to be any bans. Overall, the market is extremely strong. I know we're hearing about reprints, but we have no date, specific dates for a reprint. Again, I know the restock in June, July. We don't know if it is a reprint. I don't think it is. I think it's restock. Again, my reasoning for that, and I'll say it, again is when reprints were announced a lot of people who were holding on to that stock and I don't just mean people like me and you I mean big players people with hundreds of cases of it who were doing the same kind of thing that we were doing with one or two boxes you know keeping it keeping it for like many years in the future and then you know we can put it in an acrylic case and it's part of a value collection because the price has gone up so much however people sold that product they were planning on holding it for a bit longer, reprints were announced, they decided to get rid of it then because they knew the market would be diluted with way more product. And so that product became available all of a sudden, which before it was ring fenced. So that is what I think the restock in June, July is going to be. I don't think we've seen any reprints yet from Bandai, from what they've been telling us is, is, is um, on the way. For anyone who doesn't know, um, Opio 1, Opio 2, potentially Opio 3 are coming to some LGSs. And when I say coming to some LGSs, I mean they're getting like a case, which is like 12 boxes. So you'd be very lucky to see any of that. And Bandai did announce at the GAMA Awards that they would be reprinting. No, sorry. Yeah, it was at the GMA uh, Awards that they would be reprinting OPO 5, OPO 6 and OPO 7. But you wouldn't tell because a lot of those cards are at all time highs. So overall, the market is very bullish. People are waiting to hear more information. And if you're someone who's sitting on a lot of products of OPO 5, for example, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea to maybe accumulate some of your money back and sit with a nice moon bag. But that's just my opinion. Nothing I say is financial advice. Anyway, I've talked on long enough. I have loads of editing to do. Okay, guys, if you're still watching at the end of the video, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. And if you've enjoyed the video, why not hit the like button? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. What do you think about these prices? What do you think about all-time highs for some of the manga rare cards in OPO5? Do you think Pills of Strength is going to go from strength to strength? No pun intended. Let me know down below. And... If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future content. Okay guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.